Hey friends and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to do a chit chat get ready with me talking about YouTubers fame and all of the everything in between. So subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. We do videos every Monday and Friday here. Beauty makeups, body paintings, effects videos. We talk about creepy scary stories and other interesting things. So if you want to watch more subscribe and hit the notification bell. So like I said we are talking about YouTubers and YouTube fame. Basically the 10 stages I came up with of what YouTubers go through when they hit being famous. Whether it's in real life on the internet, if people see them as celebrities or not, there are some like stages to fame that YouTubers go through when they get a lot of followers, subscribers, views, all of that in between. And who am I, this floral, Elvis-loving, random, artsy makeup person on YouTube to even talk about this? I feel like some sort of YouTube fame is when you can make a living and income that's comfortable off of YouTube alone. I have been at that stage and I also have been around a lot, a lot of YouTubers. Not saying that gives me like everything in the world to talk about this, but I just, want to explain what it's like being a YouTuber and getting to that level. They did a study, this is what started this video, they did a study with I want to say high schoolers, maybe some middle schoolers, asking them what they want to be when they grow up and over 40% of them wanted to be YouTubers. What? For your information children, it's easier to grow on TikTok. You could be a TikTok, no I'm just kidding, a little bit kidding. We're switching it up and doing my eyes first. But as an observer and someone who has gone through a little bit of this, a taste of it themselves, I came up with 10 stages. There's probably more that YouTubers go through when they get some sort of fame. The first one being is one night, I mean, you start celebrating small goals of like, oh my gosh, my video got 10,000 views. Oh my gosh, I got 10,000 subscribers and it just starts climbing and climbing to the point where you become a YouTube partner and on top of that, you also start getting some sort of an income, whether it's Taco Bell grade money or you start saving it up and start getting more and more where you could quit your job and start investing in your business, meaning you can upgrade your cameras and equipment to make your videos better. Maybe this is just LA Hollywood YouTuber because that's where I grew up in and I li now live in Texas, but I came from LA. Every YouTube star YouTuber starts going to Sammy's Camera Store or one of those big box stores that ha is like a specialty camera shop in LA. And then the once the employees know that they are YouTubers and not actual filmmakers, they kind of treat them like trash. Honestly, unfortunately, same thing when you go to film school or makeup school and the teachers find out you're a YouTuber, that happens there too, but they start actually putting quality money and time into their videos and they get better. This will come up later on in this list too. And they make a whole announcement video about their equipment and go some of them, some of these YouTubers, including myself, will go through like how we film because everyone wants to know how you film your videos. What's the process, sis? But then once you start getting views, no matter how cheerful, how good you are, how talented you are, how perfect you are to the eyes of your viewers, there are gonna be people that come across your videos that just don't like you. And they make it their vendetta, they make it their thing to make you feel like the ultimate garbage dumpster pail and you start getting hate comments and death threats even. And people are always talking about your body. Even if you just show your neck up, they're gonna feel, try to get you where it hurts, right? Right. And so you might start getting stages of body dysmorphia because not only are you criticizing your material of your work on your videos, but you start criticizing who you are and your body shape. Mostly your body shape before it is who you are because they question who you're friends with, you post on Instagram pictures together. They question it all, sis. So we get a little bit of body dysmorphia definite anxiety and depression because you're 
work from home, you eat, sleep, crap, everything, film videos in the same place and you get very isolated because your real life friends don't always understand and if you keep your real life friends that's amazing but you start getting very attached to your job to the point where it's overwhelming and depressing in some points areas even though you should feel so lucky to work from home and to be able to make a living filming your videos in your little apartment house what have you but it could be depressing and lonely so to combat this you maybe get a therapist or what a lot of people do on youtube is they get a personal trainer like the comments about their image their friends their weight really gets to them to the point where they'll probably get a personal trainer they spend about three to ten grand i'm telling you on these personal trainers they're not cheap and these personal trainers want you to post them on Instagram, tag them maybe, really sell you and convince you that this is gonna make your videos and overall quality of them look better because you're gonna be skinnier. And if a YouTuber doesn't get a personal trainer, I can guarantee you, they're gonna get a friend who they trust who's into working out to help them lose weight or train them per se and work out with them if they don't get the personal trainer. As someone who's been through the personal trainer phase and spent an exorbitant amount that's disgusting <laughs> in that stage of YouTube, it's ridiculous. And another reason they may want to get a personal trainer is because maybe they get an agent, they're talked into getting an agent or I mean, I have a publicist sis who's amazing, who I love, but not all agents and managers and publicists are out for your benefit. I got lucky and I have an amazing publicist. But once you start doing this, you may have to go to meetups with your fans. You may do live events or shows. And your trainer hones into this. Some of them, the bad ones, there are good ones, but some of the bad ones hone in on this insecurity on how you look at your job and these meetups. They're like, oh, don't you want to lose this much weight to for your meetup with your fans, like, how do they think you're gonna look? Wouldn't your videos look better? Again, tapping into those insecurities that they know you're getting. And if you think that these trainers are using you, sis, just wait. Because if you start upgrading your life with cameras, picture qualities, video qualities, and your family and friends start noticing that they see it as a sense of confidence in yourself or a sense of fame and success of fans and viewers maybe coming up to you in public and taking pictures with you and you have a trainer and you're doing so well on YouTube. Your friends and family may see that as an opportunity, not all of them, to ask you for favors. Hey, if you could get this, new camera why can't i get a new camera laptop from you haven't i always been there for you through thick and thin some friends not all of them expect bigger and better from you since you're doing bigger and better because youtube is honestly kind of like youtube fame is people see it as kind of like winning the lottery especially with newer algorithms on youtube it's really hard to gain success on it so when people see that success they want some of it since they know you. They feel like they've helped you get there. Maybe your family needs help with bills more than once and then it turns into them asking for extravagant things. That's not for every, it's not everybody. I'm using the new e.l.f. CC cream because I got the wrong color. The color I got before was way too light and that was the color Fair 120 Neutral and this is 240 warm so hopefully this is more my tone because the other one says i look like casper ghostly white Ooh, that's a little dark yeah it's too dark dang it let me mix the two but if you're lucky enough to when you start off maybe you do have a strong family and friends and significant other to where this stuff doesn't happen to you but say you get a boyfriend after you get youtube fame and you start wondering if they're really there 
for you or when you do the boyfriend tag video and you wonder if they're there for you or to be in the video sometimes. Like it's insane. I think that's why it took me so long to introduce my, to start introducing my boyfriends in my videos. Because you know, that could change things too. And have your viewers get more glimpse into your life when you show them friends, family, significant others, you know? So whenever you're sad or something, they're like, why is this person sad? You know, they work from home on YouTube. They have a boyfriend. They have this best friend. Is there something wrong with you and your friend? Is there something wrong with you and your significant other if you're sad? Because you shouldn't be sad because, you know, you have it made working from home as a YouTuber and you're YouTube famous. And you're famous online. And everyone loves you. They only see the positives and not realize that we're humans too. You know, the happiest looking, most beautiful woman in the world could have problems and issues too like Beyonce. I love this foundation, but finding my color is a hassle. Ooh. I'm also using the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating Concealer. I love this stuff. So once your boyfriend, your family, whoever, you start getting gifts for yourself and your family, like really treating everyone. I remember at one point I was giving just everyone iPads and cameras and like makeup and jobs. I was like employing some of my friends. Then there's the Gucci stage because when the holidays and stuff rolls around, what's the one gift that's super like fancy that you know almost everyone will like that's universal for all ages is Gucci. Well, I guess I just call it the Gucci stage because Gucci, again, it's that one thing that everyone knows the brand, even grandmas know what Gucci is. It's known for the wealthy, I mean, it's like a month's rent for one product. And so that's like the one thing that you shower yourself with and maybe like a close friend. And it's very like popular in the scene, in meetings. And like whenever you go to these events, everyone's wearing Gucci, Gucci, Dior, Louis Vuitton, all these name brand stuff. And you start changing and morphing into like this so-called famous person, but you're kind of just looking like everybody else. This also goes into the Gucci stage is also, some people not only get talked into these personal trainers, but lip fillers, you could get free lip filler. You could get free, like the fake nose job I call it, where you get filler in your nose. I mean, do you boo, but also don't do it if someone's just giving it to for free and talking you into it. Do what makes you feel comfortable because you could get free lipo, BBL, where you do the whole lift of your whole body. Just from being an influencer, it's uh, crazy. I haven't gotten any work done yet. I've been offered free uh, butt lift, uh, liposuction, free lip filler, nose job, all of that. I've gotten laser <laughs> hair removal. That's it so far. That's in kind of the Gucci stage where you kind of feel like you're upgrading yourself with money. When you have like a problem, this is not just YouTube fame, but in general, you feel like you could just make everything happier and fix everything with money. Because that's what people start associating with like, oh, why are you complaining? You have so much money, you could just fix it, you know? If that's the case, man. And what comes with these stages while you're fixing yourself at home and you feel lonely because being a YouTuber is kind of lonely even though you have all these trips. It kind of feels like a high school culture when you go on some of these events. But if you're just there to chit chat and make friends, you won't land into that high school culture of people gossiping and chatting and just being there to be, I don't know, just like high schoolers. But it's kind of hard to avoid because there's a lot of YouTube people that are like high schoolers, unfortunately. I feel like even though when you go to your regular job and YouTube turns into a job for you, when you go to your regular job, there's always the watering hole where like people go to get their coffee, their snacks, what have you, and they start like talking gossip or what have you. There's gossip in every field and especially YouTuber. I mean, YouTube drama, people make a living on YouTube about it. But where these gossips really start popping off is these brand trips, is these brand events that are like insane. I remember the most insane brand thing I went on. I haven't been on a brand trip, but I went to this crazy brand dinner that I was sitting next to like The Rock, you know, The Rock Johnson's goddaughter with this makeup skincare company. 
at this bougie restaurant that I would never be able to afford in my entire career or life. I think our meals had like six courses with alcohol and steaks and all this stuff. I had my own gluten-free bread, which I hadn't had gluten-free bread at that point in like, I don't even know how long, dipping into the Beetlejuice palette. It was just insane. But sometimes, a lot of times at these events, like even going, I've been to so many makeup headquarters and you start seeing the same people and befriending amazing people and then seeing some crazy people that aren't nice. And it's up to you to give in, if you wanna give in to those crazy people that aren't nice who just say something offhand. That's where the drama starts, I feel like. Sometimes people push buttons and say something offhand and that's where the drama starts. And you don't wanna give in to it because people get jealous of numbers. They just care about numbers, unfortunately, some of these brands and some of these people. And they start being like, oh well, they say stuff just to get a rise. But I'm the type of person where I'll just remember that forever for the rest of my life and I just will know what you said and not, you know, I'm not gonna fight. I'm just gonna remember. Cause I know that first impressions aren't everything. But at the same time, if you first meet me and say something really crazy, right, right. But once you're at these food stages and brand stages where like you get all this extravagant food you start craving it too and you start getting takeout all the time and you could afford like nice food especially if you're someone that grew up with not nice extravagant food and now like you get all this food that these brands start giving you and you could get it yourself and then you start gaining weight a lot of youtubers because you get comfy, you know, working at home, not working out much, and then it, the cycle starts over again with the comments and the personal trainers. Other than contour, I'm like, what am I missing? It is eyebrows. I'm gonna first use a brow pencil and then this new Jen Adkin e.l.f. collaboration brow pomade. And once you start having these meetups, going to these events, there's even like the conventions like VidCon and stuff, and people see you're following not on all your social medias and people start talking, they always talk, right? You even get people from your high school and stuff who you may or may not like start to try to get a hold of you and be like, hey, remember me? Do you need me to? Every YouTuber I know that starts getting famous, people start coming out of the woodwork per se and you will get like people that may have been mean to you in high school, been an actual bully, asked to, hey, can you promote my band? Hey, can you, do you need someone in your videos? Stuff like that, and it's super annoying. And every YouTuber I know, again, goes through this. Whether it's people you barely talk to in high school that pretend like you were best friends in high school or they actually wanna befriend you, like no. I even heard of high schools that say, home of so-and-so so YouTuber at other people's graduation without permission of, of the YouTuber not even being there. It's ridiculous, you know? All right, let's try this brow pomade, shall we? Oh my gosh, it's like a hair comb. What is it doing? Is it doing anything? I don't see any change, doctor. I see absolutely no change. Well, this is sad. This is depressing. Meh. What you can do instead is get some hair gel pomade, not hair gel, hair pomade. Then you can get a spoolie and just make your own, sis, because that was trash. I'm unimpressed. Ooh, yes, this is what I wanted. My brows feel better. All right, let's try one more product from this Jen Atkin e.l.f. thing with their lip liner lipstick duo and talk about the four year run. Because unfortunately, every YouTuber I found has about around a four year run. If it's five years, three years, it's around four, you know? Meaning that's how long they have to keep their fame until it starts going downhill, unfortunately. It's kind of like celebrities that have like a five year run around, unless they're like really superiorly good, have it in with what movie or show they could be in, no people, etc., etc. YouTubers have to keep upping their game 
reinventing themselves, changing up their content, trying a new thing at least once a month, I feel like. I mean, I've been to all of these classes of study algorithms, marketing, you have to know marketing to be a really popular YouTuber, which I suck at. I even went to classes on how to market myself and all that stuff, and I still, as you could tell, not understand it because I'm bad at marketing, but you have to be able to know how to do all these things and reinvent yourself to stay relevant. I hate that word. I hate content creator, relevant, and even saying fans as a YouTuber makes me feel weird. That's just me. Anyways, yeah, so I always feel like YouTubers have around a four year span. That means they could be at the top of their height of the career for around four years until something happens, especially with cancel culture lately. Oh my goodness, cancel culture. Let's even talk about that. I love this color though, this lip color. So the cancel culture is the people that look up these YouTubers past and not everyone has a perfect past and they find stuff, whether they're being racist, homophobic, abusive, what have you, and they search up their past and they find things that they think is the worst. It may be the worst, unfortunately. Sometimes you find some crazy stuff. A lot of, not all of these YouTubers, but some of them, they, they start YouTube when they're straight out of high school or something, and they don't get the chance to live that college, sweet 20-something, freedom, independent, normal life before they hit YouTuber. And sometimes that could be dangerous, I find where they don't experience love or dating as much and they stunt their growth as a normal t late teen, 20 something, early adulthood. And so they start messing up really bad, whether it's with drugs, alcohol, or underage people. Oof, I hate even talking about it because they feel young on the inside because they stunted their growth before they decided to make a job, huge career that consumes their whole life of a YouTuber, but that's not even an excuse to date underage people that are legally children. Just don't, don't, don't do it. Don't fall for that. Some YouTubers do that. Why? It's disgusting and terrible. I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying sometimes that happens. It's disgusting. But they start doing apology videos, apologies for their past. And they start doing criminal behavior sometimes for YouTube views. And the apologies for their past are so terrible. I don't know what it is about YouTubers. I don't know who advises them to do these apologies, what terrible school they learn these terrible apologies from, but they're always disgustingly horrible. It's almost like they're regular person persona, they forgot how to live like a regular person and it's like a robot shoved into the back of their back or they get such a big ego they never say sorry correctly or they don't think they did anything wrong or they or they always keep justifying their actions in their head even though they're lying to the camera about it's weird i don't get it i don't understand it I don't get people that just cannot genuinely say sorry and think they made a mistake in asking questions on how they think how others would go about it and asking for help from real people and not a publicist, a manager, a uh, what the yes people. It's just so crazy. And I think they get caught up because there's all these people asking saying yes to them just so that they can get something out of these YouTubers because they think they're so famous. And there's that stage where YouTubers are not seen as celebrities, right? But some of them get as many views and as many things in public, even more so than real movie television celebrities. So should we call YouTubers celebrities? I don't know. They're a weird hybrid of original like media of movies and television celebrities, the traditional ones we grew up knowing, but it's like even weirder because viewers see into their lives even more personal and they feel like they know them even though the YouTuber doesn't know anything about them. Not to be hateful, but it's just an odd, you know, situation sometimes, especially when people say, oh, that YouTuber stage where People start showing up at your house. I don't get that. That should be illegal. 
I've had that. I don't, I don't like that stage. I've had peeping toms. People wait outside of my house in their car. Follow me home. I don't like it. A lot of YouTubers don't like it, but then some YouTubers call paparazzi on themselves. Like why? Why do you do that though? It's just all odd. Being a YouTuber, that's why I don't think it's a, it is a, a legit job about how you have to be a filmographer, an editor, a producer, a music engineer. You have to be a script writer, you have to be an actor in some cases, you have to be a makeup artist in some cases, you have to be a costume designer in some cases, you have to be so many, wear so many hats to be a YouTuber, and that's why people get weirded out when they say YouTubers pay to have people work for them, it's because it's a lot of hats to wear, you know? But I'm a normal human, I feel like I tasted a little bit, little charcuterie board of YouTube fame, I had like a little Salami cheese rose or something. Say Nikki Tutorials had a buffet. I had a charcuterie board salami cheese rose of the situation. Cause I was very fortunate. It's almost like a weird dream cause when it's gone, you don't realize what happened till later. Anyway, I'm gonna put on my lashes and I'll be back. And just like that, we have lashes on. This makeup look is so different and wild and weird, but I had fun. Subscribe for more videos like this. We do two videos a week every Monday and Friday here on this channel. Remember, you can subscribe for some more. We also do effects videos, body paintings, creepy stories. So stick around. And just a little PSA, you could be a YouTuber if you want to. But I'm just saying they only have around four years or so of like top, top fame and getting there. And then on the way down, in my experience, not all YouTubers, some of them last eight, ten, over ten years. If they keep reinventing themselves and like... Risk it all, do crazy stuff. It's a very fair few in my experience. I'm not ultimate fame at all. Just been on YouTube for a long, long, long time. I hope you guys liked this video. Thank you friends so much. Leave a comment down below on what you would love to see on this channel as well. Topics to talk about, effects videos, anything like that. If I choose your comment, I'll definitely shout you out. I love you guys, bye.